Hi there, I'm Nick. I'm an experienced science teacher who now works for Interactive Scientific, creating classroom resources to help you to get Nano's inbox into your classroom. This is our session on fractional distillation. All of our sessions are made to be one hour long out of the box sessions. They come with a lesson plan, a PowerPoint and the worksheet. You'll see in the PowerPoint that it refers to fill in the gaps on your worksheet and things like that. This is the worksheet that we're referring to. So the lesson starts with the settler activity, um, a nice little anagram to get them thinking. And then we move on to assessing their previous learning in the science game. So this will be done using their own mini whiteboards. Write down a fact about fractional distillation on your whiteboard. So they hold their boards up. This helps you to see any misconceptions and where your students are in their learning. We then go on to the learning outcomes and the lesson objectives. Obviously you may need to edit these depending on your school policy, but I have put some basic ones in there for you. We go on to discussing what is fractional distillation. There's a fill in the blanks for them, which you can then talk through. We then have a little discussion on what are fractions with this animation, so we show them that all of the fractions are mixed up together in crude oil and then they all get separated out into their different fractions. Then we discuss crude oil. This is where you might want to discuss it. It's a finite resource, um, but we are heavily reliant on it. After that, we introduce the diagram of the fractional distillation column or the fractionating tower. I've included the diagram in the worksheet for them, however, they will need to fill in some of the labels. We then talk a bit about how the fractional distillation column works, and they have uh, sentences to complete to do with the properties and the length of the hydrocarbon chain. We then put a little mini practical in. This is to test what they understand about the properties of the hydrocarbon and their chain length. I'd expect you to have a couple of different samples, three to five would be ideal, um, starting from very viscous to a really thin fluid. This is to help them put their learning into practice. They then use Nano Simbox to look up some of the fractions. This is the bit that you will need to edit. You will put in your teacher access code and you will also put in the location of where they can find the molecules. For this, they'll be building propane, petrol, kerosene and diesel. These are slightly simplified molecules. Obviously, petrol has a lot of other chemicals mixed in with it. And also, most of these are actually a range of chain lengths. So we have just picked the middle ground. So we start to discuss what might be the patterns in the chain lengths. And then on their worksheets, they've got this table to complete to see if they have been able to correctly work out the pattern. So we introduce that these are alkanes and what the formula for calculating them is, and we go through the correct answer. Then we start to talk about combustion, which is one of the key factors that they need to know, especially the equation for it. So we go back into NanoSimbox. Again, you'll have input your code and the location of these molecules. They're building propane, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water. I've chosen propane because it's a bit simpler when it comes to balancing the chemical equation. So 
we talk about combustion and then we discuss how we can write a shorter version of it. This leads on nicely to the word equation, which they write down on their worksheet. Then we introduce balancing the chemical equation. The reason why I put the, these in is because I think it's really important for students to have more than one access point to the information and if they understand the word equations and the chemical equations it just gives them more opportunities for, for recall. I describe balancing equations a bit like making a cake. They put all of the ingredients in, they mix them around, they bake it and it comes out and it's a cake. All of the ingredients are still in it, in the same quantities, but they look entirely different and they're more difficult to separate back out again now. So firstly, they use what they've learnt from Nano's inbox and replace the words with the chemical formula. We explain to them that when we're doing chemical equations, we don't include energy as it's not an element. Then we start to discuss about balancing it. The way that I like to teach balancing equations is I use the counter method. So that they put counters for each of the molecules, for each molecule that's represented and how many of them. We discuss that when you times a molecule, you're not only timesing the first element, but you're timesing both of the elements. We keep going through doing this. Until you have your balanced equation. They then write down the full balanced equation for the combustion of propane on their worksheets. We then test their learning by getting them to try out balancing these other equations for methane, ethane and butane. This is a good to know rather than a need to know um, and it will be useful as an activity that can be used across different abilities. We then go through the answers. At the end of the session, we have a quick quiz. Um, again, they'll use, the, they'll use their whiteboards to answer these. So which is more viscous? Which is more flammable? Lower boiling point? Gas at room temperature? Which of these is a wax to use in cosmetics? A is actually paraffin wax. That's why I've used that. But they should be able to work out that one of them is more likely to be slightly more solid at room temperature than the other. And then putting these in order of size. If they're canny enough, they will have noticed that these are the same as were on their table earlier on. So it's not actually as complicated as it seems. Then we discuss what factors could you change and measure in an experiment testing the rate of combustion. This is to get them thinking about the products and reactants in the combustion reaction. I've also added an extension, how would you teach fractional distillation to someone else in a fun way. I like to include this because I always think it's really interesting to see what students come up with when you ask them this. Sometimes you get some really useful things that you can use with other classes. And that's the end of our session. If you've got any questions, feel free to email us at info at interactive scientific.com. Thank you. Enjoy your lesson.